Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here. And yes, we are still talking about wintry weather. And honestly, over the last couple of days and really since the weekend, the pattern was there. But really today, Tuesday, I mean, the trends are, there's a really high confidence we're gonna break our snowless streak here in Charlotte. And I will caution you though, it doesn't take a whole lot to break this streak. Remember, we just need a 10th of an inch of snow or sleet. By the way, sleet, when it accumulates, counts the same as snow. So I think there's a really high probability, 80% plus, that we're going to break this streak. Now, the question is how much and how much of a mix. I will tell you this, I'm not expecting huge amounts of snow, um, but it's gonna be a mix and it's certainly gonna be an impact to your driving on a Saturday morning. Now, here's a look, 1,081 days as of today. If we get to Friday, it would be 1,083 days without measurable snow. So if we break that streak, that's what's going to happen. So let's get right to some of the details. We'll dive straight into this here, um, kind of show you the system. Same thing as yesterday, still seeing the development here of this low pressure across West Texas, moving into Texas. The one thing that's interesting about this storm, it actually looks like it'll be more powerful over the Mid-South as it moves to the North and East. It kind of flattens out and weakens a little bit before it re-intensifies possibly off the East Coast. So it might do one of these weird jumps. And we see this happen sometimes with these lows. Um, as they get to the coast, they kind of re-intensify, but you can see it trying to take in that negative tilt. Remember I talked about positive tilts? Positive tilt to this trough makes it kind of weak. It doesn't make it super strong. So it, it's going to be a fast mover. That's why I'm not too big on big totals for us. Um, I think you're looking at, you know, less than a half an inch of liquid, right? So in a perfect world, if you had all snow, fluffy snow at that, it would be a max of five inches, but it's not a max of five inches because it's not going to be fluffy it's not going to be all snow so you're looking at probably something at least half that much if not lower and i'll talk about we're not we don't have specific totals yet but i'll show you the probabilities of some of those totals um, as we get closer to you know friday we'll probably have the first map either tonight or tomorrow i'm thinking tonight or tomorrow maybe by 11 with two more model runs but you kind of get the idea there so let's go back and talk about this system so you, you remember this map i showed really kind of shows the three tracks. And I'm gonna go and show you the outcome of track one, pretty far to the south. I'll be honest, this one looks almost impossible at this point. That looks the least likely. This track here would be like the best track for snow, number two, for Charlotte at least, because we're right on that edge. It's kind of a hybrid. It's closer to three, but not quite there. If I could have a track in between two or three, I think that would be more realistic of the kind of track that I expect to see with this storm. That being said, it does produce wintry weather, accumulating wintry weather for us. So let's look at the ensembles real quickly. Um, this is the European ensemble this morning. Look at all those members. Only one, two, three, four members out of 51 has zero snow. So that's a very high probability. That's the European GFS ensembles, all except for one, two so only two out of 31 has no snow and even the canadian model has all of them except for one two three four five so you're looking at almost every single piece of data shows some type of accumulation so how much are we talking about the amounts that's the big question but here to me this is the probabilities of seeing something again for Charlotte North, I'm almost close to 70% plus, right? Um, you get down to Columbia, the Midlands, those percentages drop off quite a bit. So let's look at some of the probabilities here. Let me back this up. I didn't want to go that way. Um, this is my boomer bus graphic. So as of right now, I'm not putting specific totals in, but from a strictly probability standpoint, you know, we're at an 80% chance. This is where I'm getting my 80% chance, by the way, uh, for, for measurable snow. 80% chance that we're going to be between a trace and three inches. I know that seems like a huge amount, but guys, that's like the difference between the tenth and three tenths of an inch of liquid. It's really tiny amounts of liquid difference. And because ice is mixing in, sleet ruins everything. The more sleet that mixes in, it reduces the totals overall, even though you can get measurable sleet. It really, a lot of sleet, I mean, to get an inch of sleet, you need like an inch of liquid, right? Uh, <laughs> to get an inch of snow, you only need a tenth of an inch of liquid. So just kind of shows you sleep mixes in, it kind of eats up all the moisture without accumulating much. So right now I am 80% sure we're going to see 
measurable precipitation. So, and I, I think right now, if you were to pin me down, looking at all the guidance, I kind of broke it down. European ensemble mean, which is the average, is 2.5 inches of sleet or snow. GFS ensemble mean is 1.8. The Canadian is 2.7. And then if you blend all those with a deterministic, you're getting something around nine tenths of an inch. So just below an inch of snow or sleet accumulation, which is measurable, right? But not huge amount. So how is this going to impact you? So the snow meter for the first time in a long time uh, since 2022, I have it at a three because there is a legit chance of snow. Um, it might go up a little bit, but trust me, it's probably not going to go crazy. Charlotte will probably close, but it doesn't deserve to close for this. But um, it's been two years. I think that's what I was always worried about going two years of a snow drought. When we get any snow at all, people are going to freak out even more than they normally do. Remember, we average three and a half inches of snow per winter. It's supposed to snow every winter. It's not supposed to not snow like it did the last two years, which are the first two years in 146 years of record keeping. So those were the anomalies. This is not. This is normal. The lack of snow was not normal. So got to make sure we keep that straight. Um, so yeah, so potentially we're going to see some measurable snow. And again, I'll go back to the potential here. You know, it's going to cause basically, oh, that's the wrong graphic. Sorry, guys. That's actually the wrong graphic. It's going to cause rough travel as we go into Friday night and Saturday morning. So the timing, right? Everyone's asking me about timing. After 5 p.m. Friday through about noon on Saturday. That's the best window I can give you right now. But within that window, there's going to be a mix of everything going on. So just remember that. Let me move to this graphic here again. Uh, most of this will probably start as snow, change to sleet or freezing rain. So it's not going to be all snow. So just the best chances of snow actually will be at the very, very beginning of this event as it approaches. So real quickly, let's look at what this is going to look like as it heads our way. All right, so we're going to look at the European model for this one, not because I think it's the perfect model, but because it's been most consistent. Honestly, I would not read too much into this. Like I always say, this is a deterministic model. I just want to give you a general idea, more of the timing and placement, and just know that the timing and placement is plus or minus 50 miles with the placement, maybe plus or minus six hours with the timing, right? Okay, so we'll go through time. You'll see the system develop on Thursday, really. Um, so this is Thursday night into Friday. Here's our storm system developing. Pretty big snow event for Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas. Watch the movement of this system and notice where the low is. It's pretty close to the coast, but it's moving inland, right? So what I'm talking about is the surface low, which is right here. Look where it is. It's on the coast. So the, remember what I said about the track? The track needs to be further down here for all snow. This is not like too far north, but it's also a little too close. It's certainly not up in here, which would mean all rain, but Again, it's close enough. And again, it's not super strong. 1,005 millibars isn't going to rock your boat here. Um, we get into, this is 2 a.m. Saturday morning. So let me back this up. Remember I said the best chance of snow is at the beginning. So this is Friday evening. This is all snow in here, right? So it's all snow Friday evening till about 8 p.m., 9 p.m. Gets closer to midnight. And then we start to see ice and sleet mixing. So the best snow chance, if you want to see fluffy stuff falling from the sky, it's probably going to be Friday evening because that's the combination of the coldest air, but also the lightest amount of moisture. So it's not going to be super heavy. By the time the heaviest moisture gets here, it's likely, <laughs> excuse me, all ice. And look at the low. It's tracking on the coast there. So again, remember, this is plus or minus. This thing could shift north or shift south by 50 miles and ruin everything. But it's so consistent that it's in the area that even if it shifts north, it's probably still going to start as snow and sleet, but change to rain. If it shifts a little farther south, it starts as snow, but shifts mainly to sleet or freezing rain and never changes to rain. But you see it moving through quickly. This is the other part of this. It's a fast moving system. This also reduces the chance for big totals because it's moving so quickly. It's gone. And look, it actually gets stronger off the coast. Look at the pressure drops to 993 millibars and gets stronger away from us. So kind of a bummer for snow lovers that it didn't bomb out closer to us that it happens farther away. Now, could it bomb out closer to us? If that happens, that could ramp up our totals. But right now, I'm just not seeing it. So that's the latest. Um, I'll have updates over the next couple of days. But we are keeping a close eye on this for travel issues primarily. Again, don't look for huge totals. Right now, if you had to pin me down, I'd say we're probably in that trace. I would, I'm going to go from trace. Let's say measurable. Tenth of an inch to an inch of snow or sleet. I think that's the best guess. The first forecast map I probably will have tonight or first thing tomorrow. 
but stay tuned. We've got winter weather on the way. There's a very high chance of wintry weather. That's the best thing I could give you right now.